outlook for the season? Uh, you know, right now we're very excited, Will, about where we stand, uh, returning the, the five people who ended the season starting last year, to have five starters returning. In my 20 years of coaching at this level, never been part of a team that had five returning starters. Uh, so that's unique. Um, seven of our top nine players back, over 80% of our scoring, 80, over 80% of our rebounding, assists, steals, blocks. Uh, you know, we, we have a lot coming back. Uh, the thing that has me most excited right now is our returning players are coaching our team. And player coach teams are always better than coach coach teams. So I'm excited about, you know, the leadership that we've seen out of our returning players. KJ has been tremendous in that regard. Uh, you know, I blow the whistle in practice, and she immediately is saying this, what I was going to say. And it means more to players to hear it from one of their peers uh, than it does from the same voice from the coach over and over again. So I feel like we have a chance uh, to have a really good year and be in position when we start conference play to compete for an OVC championship. Uh, it will not be easy. Belmont's going to be very good. Martin's going to be very good. Eastern Kentucky, to me, uh, could be that team that maybe they won't be picked up there to win the league but certainly with Jalen O'Bannon who I think along with Kishan and James is one of the top two returning players in the league uh, they could be good but I feel like uh, we'll have a great opportunity to compete uh, in the regular season and then certainly in the tournament uh, hopefully we can go into the tournament believing that we have a chance to win a championship and get back to the NCAA tournament. That, uh, that went over UT Martin in the, uh, in the postseason I mean, not only, you know, a lot of you to advance, but I mean, it seems like, you know, it's really motivated the players coming into this year. It, so, you know, it, it has the, the, you know, it gave them a little bit of t a taste of success at the tournament. And, you know, the, the biggest thing is with that core group coming back and those five returning starters coming back, they know that they, they can beat, not only compete with the best team in the league, they can beat the best team in the league. Because last year, Martin won the regular season title and that's the best team in our conference. Uh, so they have that belief and you know the greatest thing about it was the fact that we didn't change the you know everybody after that game is like wow what adjustments did you make and all we didn't change the game plan the game plan was the right game plan when we got beat by 21 the, the week before uh, but our players took notice and understood you know this is a one-day thing let's do exactly what we're supposed to do so instead of being a step out of position on defense we were in position. So, you know, perfect example, Jesse Ward, who's an all-conference player, had 21 against us here, hit seven threes in the first half. In the uh, tournament game, she didn't get a three off till the end of the game. You know, so they learned a lot from that experience. And, you know, I think that's gonna pay huge dividends for us. It has over the summer. And it's not just the, the win and advance into the semifinals, it's, the fact that we lost a game in the semifinals against a very good team that our players believe they should have won if we did one or two things a little better. Uh, you know, we missed a lot of wide open looks and, you know, we didn't do things quite as well. We didn't get the great shots we got against Martin. We got good shots. Uh, so that's really driving them as well. Let's take that next step uh, and win those next two games instead of just getting there. Where is your team deeper this year? Uh, we'll, we'll have more depth just by virtue of the fact that we have many players who can play multiple positions. Uh, one player that you know, we really haven't talked about is Bria Bethay, who was, was just starting to understand the Division I game last year uh, when she hurt her knee, missed a few weeks in the middle of the conference season. Then it's really tough at that point. She's missed a few weeks, not allowed to do anything, and then work her back into the rotation. Uh, her ability to play multiple positions and score the basketball and be an extra defender with great length is going to help us. Uh, Bria Gulledge has made a huge jump from her freshman to sophomore year so far in practice. Uh, she's going to be from day one an all-conference caliber player, I believe, somebody you can give the ball to and that can go get you a basket and can cause problems on the defensive end. And Keyshawn, I mean, KJ's going to be one of the best players in the league. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to say she's the best player in the league, and I'm sure every other coach is going to say their player is one of the best players in the league. But she does so many different things for us that she can be moved around. Kyra Gulich coming back was second in the league in rebounding last year uh, as a fifth-year senior is going to help. But that depth is going to be really propped up. Taylor Reese has, has been making plays in practice. Uh, she's probably our most talented, most gifted player 
Uh, didn't play much as a freshman last year because she was trying to figure out how hard to play. Uh, she's doing a great job right now in practice and will be in that rotation. We have two freshman post players that have kind of gone back and forth and Katie McKenzie and Jessica Richards that can provide depth at 6'2", 6'3", with good solid bodies, give us a post presence physically. Uh, so I feel like we're going to have pretty good depth. Mary Jones, a junior college transfer guard, is a really strong body guard that gives us a different look at those positions. Uh, so I feel like we're going to be much deeper than we were last year. KJ is really confident uh, as far as not only expecting to be player of the year, but expecting to be in the championship conversation. Right. As a coach, what is it like to kind of hear her feel that way? Well, uh, one thing, KJ is really confident about a lot of things, OK? <laughs> She's confident about everything. Um, and that's, that's something that's great to have uh, as a coach. You know, you really appreciate that, the fact that she's willing to put it out there. You know, and what we've talked about this year is, you know, if you're not crazy enough to state what you want to achieve, then you're not crazy enough to, to get what you want to achieve. Uh, it's just not going to happen for you. And she's willing to put it out there that this is what she's working towards. She wants to be OVC Player of the Year. Now, that comes down to other people just making a decision, but she will be that caliber of player. She wants to be a professional. You know, she works towards that every day. She truly loves the game, and more importantly than anything, she wants her team to win a championship. You know, I, I've, I have championship rings. Coach Reese has championship rings. Uh, Coach TC, Tony Cross, has championship rings. And we talk about that all the time. Nobody on our team has championship rings, and KJ's one of those people that drives others to want to do uh, do that and get her own ring. What part of her game does she need to improve? Uh, she she needs to become a better free throw shooter. To me, uh, she's right at you know upper 60, 69 percent from the free throw line. For her to take that next step, she shot it very well from the three in some games last year. She's a streaky three point shooter, and she has stepped that up. She's a much better three point shooter now than she was a year ago. So that makes her a tough guard because she's so athletic. But to me, for her to become a, you know, she was a very good scorer last year. But for her to become a great scorer, like, you know, top 10 in the nation, mid 20s, 21, 22 a game, uh, she needs to make free throws at a higher rate because then she'll feel more comfortable going, getting to the free throw line. Uh, with her athletic ability, she's going to have chances to get to the line. Um, you remember, I know you remember Ashley Hayes. Uh, when Ashley Hayes was a, KJ was a sophomore last year. When Ashley Hayes was a junior, she averaged about 17 a game. And one of the things we talked with her about going into her senior year was, you don't shoot enough free throws, and you're not as good a free throw shooter as you're capable. And her senior year, she got to the line twice as much, I believe, right at it. Her scoring average went up in conference. She averaged almost 24 a game. She got to the free throw line a lot, and she shot in the upper 80s. And that's the challenge. Uh, if KJ is able to do that, she's really virtually an unguardable player. You've touched on your returners, and obviously everyone knows about KJ. How important is it that it comes down to crunch time, they key in on her? You have four other experienced players on the court that know what you expect, know what, what, what could happen. How important is that? Oh, it's extremely important. You know, you can, you can gear your team towards stopping any one player. I mean, if you really want to do it. Uh, you know, the great thing is we do have Jasmine Borders stepped up big towards the end of the season last year. Uh, she has continued to grow. Uh, she's, a, she's an outstanding shooter, but one of the things that made her better and made our team better at the end of the year last year was she became a better defender and had a better understanding defensively. And she started attacking the basket and using her athleticism. Abria Gulich can shoot it deep, can put it on the floor. Both of them are very good free throw shooters. Uh, so that, that gives us something, you know, and you have Kyra in there that can go get an offensive rebound if you need it. Uh, probably not going to run a lot of sets to isolate her, uh, but, you know, to have those players back. And then I haven't even mentioned Liesia Wright, you know, who last year was up and down early in the year, was very consistent, very good. Uh, then she had a family tragedy and never regained her complete focus after that, I felt like, and it was just kind of hit or miss. One day she's great, next day she's not very good. Um, but she will be much more consistent this year. So it's really not going to be a team where you're going to be able to key on one player. Last year, last game of the regular season against Martin, KJ didn't score. 
if she if KJ didn't score last year, we were in trouble as a team. That will not be the case this year. How do you expect returning all five starters to improve the chemistry of your team next year? Well, I mean that that really becomes we work on it every day. Uh, we have that we have those players playing together a lot, uh, which. You know, some of our incoming players, some of our new players might not think that's a whole lot of fun, uh, to be quite honest with you, but they need to be together a lot. Um, you know, many years ago, we had a team where we had five players who we felt like needed to be on the floor a lot, and we, play, we let those people play together. We had three players that played over 35 minutes a game in conference the year we won the regular season title. and. They played. They never played opposite of each other in practice, and that helped them develop the chemistry. Uh, one of the best things that's happened this year is the leadership from the veterans. They're really doing a good job making sure that those new, the new players, all feel like they're as big a part. They're the most important thing on the team. Uh, you know, the, I talked about the year we won the regular season title. The MVP of that team was a player who played about five minutes a game as voted on, like we did pick an MVP at the end of the year and we gave the award to a young lady named Jessica Jackson who played five minutes a game and everybody asked why. Well, she was a senior who was doing a good job. She shot over 50% from the field during her minutes on the court. She just happened to back up somebody who was a finalist for the Naismith Player of the Year Award and an All-American who needed to be on the floor almost 40 minutes a game for us to win a championship. And this program had never done that before, so we made the decision, this is the way we're rolling with it. And she would come into my office every week and talk about playing time. Coach, what can I do? Well, JJ, you're not gonna play. I hope, I hope you don't play, because if you play a lot, that means Ashley's either in foul trouble or she's hurt, so I hope you don't play. And she took that and we gave her a role. I talked to her about an old Celtic and the great Larry Bird Celtic teams, a guy named ML Carr who waved his towel and slapped guys on the rear end when they came out of the game. And she took that role to be the biggest cheerleader on the team. Even though she was a senior that was playing well in practice, probably deserved some more minutes from what she put out. But the best thing for the team was all that mattered to her. And that's a story like, that's what our team has to understand. And I think they all grasp that. And they have a unity and a, and a vision. They all want to be successful. And now they see that's actually attainable. So that's, that's where, where we stand.